Hello beloveds. I'm going to do a video today and I'm just going to kind of go back to the basics. Okay, four years ago, November of 2010, is when something happened to me and it's like I opened a door. I went through a door. And uh, the information that was behind that door was just so profound. But these symbols here uh, were very intriguing to me. I wanted to know, you know, what these things meant and, and why, you know, was such symbols that were created thousands of years ago still being used today. I mean, this is like our current medical symbol, okay? And here, the Star of David, I mean, it, it's everywhere you see it. It's, on, it's actually in more places than you even realize, but subconsciously you do see it. Uh, so, you know, I had become interested in these, and in one day, I was looking at a, a symbol like of this, but I had found something, and it was the strangest thing. I'd been out of town, I was uh, at a store, and I was led to something that had a symbol on it, and it had this symbol, and it was so very strange that this symbol was on such an item. And I took a photo of it with my phone, gotten home, had printed out a couple of copies, had studied it, looked at it, searched, tried to find out what it was. And one day I was carrying the, the photo through the kitchen and the sun was coming in. And the sun sort of hit the paper and reflected into my eyes. And when it did, I just had a simple thought of what this could possibly be. And when I did... Bam! I mean, it's I can't even start to tell you what all happened in, 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 in real time here. It was about 30 minutes. But where I was at that place in time, it was like thousands of years had went by. And I was able to see, it was almost like a life flashing before your eyes. You know, that kind of thing, seeing the entire life. And it was something like that. So I want to go back to the basics on uh, some of this. And kind of show you again, because this is where the rainbow concept comes in. All right, so what I've tried to do is, is I've shown that in the beginning was darkness and void. And God said, let there be light. And it was, and it was good. And he divided the light from the dark. Okay, I've shown you this is where we get our division symbol. This is also, uh, if I connect it here and connect it here, that's also even the Aleph. Okay, which is at the beginning, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. All right, uh, so then we're going to say, okay, well, this is Satan, this is God, the light, right? All right, well, then we know that uh, God is a trinity, so we have Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit, okay, and they are a trinity. Well, then also as above, so below, so if Satan was a trinity also, we'd have Satan... We'd have the false prophet, and we would have the Antichrist. And they are a trinity, right? Well, the way I was had learned on this, and now I'm going to try and fill in some of the, the colors for you. The way I was shown this, if I take this one, okay, it's going to be red, green, and violet. Red, green, and violet. Then, if I take this one, it's yellow, blue, and maroon. Okay? So, it's yellow, blue, and maroon, red, green, and violet. Now, when I merge these two together, I get this, and so now I get... And let me go back and relabel the colors. Red, green, violet. Okay, now I'm going to start here with this one. Maroon, yellow, blue. Okay, now that is six colors. All right, so now I'm going to take you and go on and, and, and complete this. Red and yellow is orange. Yellow and green is lime. 
Green and blue is teal. Blue and violet is indigo. Violet and maroon is purple. Maroon and red is scarlet. Okay? And here in the dead center is where I have tried to explain or proposed and, and, and shown through all kind of documentation, through scripture, where it's the thoughts, it's the mind, it's the, the imagination. And this is the spark right here. It's the whole creative process. All right? And but to get to this requires what I would say is called reconciliation. Okay? Because everything here is an opposing. You see, if this is Jesus, this is the Antichrist. There are two opposites. Okay? Then we have the false prophet, which is like the opposite of the Holy Spirit. Then we have God, which is the opposite of Satan. Okay? But here is the seventh pillar. So if we count these one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh pillar is in the center. And this is back to in the video yesterday I showed that wisdom buildeth her temple of seven pillars. Okay? And it's the concept of all seven becoming one. Now, this is what I want to do to you. And, and, and I this is, God forgive me, but there's no way to depict God, okay? And the closest that man can, in my understanding, is a circle, you see? Now, and we're going to say this is all God. Now, I want you to name one thing that exists outside of God. You see, and this is where I showed you the other day, one divided by one equals one versus the concept. So what happens is, is, is when you can get to this area here, huh, Basically, you can draw a circle around it. You see, and that's, and these are facets. And uh, to go back a little bit, you see, now these 12 colors make up the rainbow. The rainbow actually has 12 colors, but the 13th color is pure white light. It's the creator, the creation, the, the thoughts, the mind, the imagination. You see, then out here would be black. And you see, which is all still God also. Everything that's inside and outside is God here. Okay, but of what he has created, or what creation is, it's here. So, if you say a gun. Well, a gun does not exist outside of God, of the creation. You see, whether you call a gun good or evil, it's for his purpose. Now, you or I could never, never create something or imagine something that did not already exist within the realm of God. You see, it's like, I can't think of this, and this is like a little lighter, because I have candles and things around here, you know. Okay, I cannot create this unless it was within the realm of possibility of God. You know, it's not like I can do something, and then God looks at it and says, oh, I didn't think of that. You see, and so, and this is where, where I said the Aleph, okay, the bull, Aleph, 
which is uh, the two horns on the same bull, and even the goat, because, I mean, Anna's been kind of sort of referring on the goat there. Yes, it's two horns on the same goat, okay? But it's, it's the idea of one, uh, one divided by one equals two. So then what happens is, is you take and you divide God, and then you say, oh, this is evil, and this is good. Okay, well, back to the, the days of creation, everything that God created, he said, was good. And I think on the sixth day, he said it was very good. Okay, but knowledge, this is what knowledge does. It makes us take things and divide it into two. And then this gets back to here... And here, these are the two horns or the two columns, okay? And this is where I've tried to explain to you what is in the middle here is judgment. Now, you see, even judgment, I could not judge anything unless it already existed. Judgment, all right? And this is why God had taken judgment. Y'all know I can't draw and put it in a tree and said, don't eat it. You can eat of everything else. All the other trees, anything you can imagine or create or anything is good. Except for one thing. Judgment. Don't eat of judgment. And this is, this is why I just want to kind of go on into this. Because in my book, and that angel that has the book in his hand, and I've tried to explain to you that it's the book of wisdom and understanding and counsel and might and knowledge and fear of the Lord God. My bottom line is judgment leads to darkness and void. Because let me tell you what happens with it. When you start with judgment, by the time you're finished, there is nothing. Nothing is good enough. And when you get to that point, it's the idea of then of let there be light. Forgiveness. Non-judgment. It's all good. Hope you guys understand this. Judgment leads to darkness and void, utter destruction, nothingness. And if you get into the habit of it, this is where you'll end up. Let there be light, forgiveness. This is Christ. He was forgiveness. This is also, you see, because <laughs> in this tree here, the judgment... There's another tree, right? And this tree is the antidote. You see, judgment is like a sickness. It's a disease. Okay, so then, least man reach out also and take from the tree of life and live eternally. You see, it's he's reaching out and taking of the forgiveness. Because what happens here, and I've shown... The, the man here, Adam here, he holds a rod in his hand. And it's the rod of judgment. And what I'm going to tell you, I was given this yesterday. Hope I got enough time. Uh, that's a rod. And uh, we'll say this is a rod. Iron sharpens iron. So two rods of iron, person against person, judgment against judgment will actually create two swords. You see, they both have become sharpened on both sides. So then, what happens is, you lay it down. And this is the concept of the sword in the stone. Iron sharpens iron.